Say, I want to know him. This should be our goal. We've been talking about this for the past couple of services. And just like Paul, this is what we want to be able to say. We don't want to be f- so focused on, well, I, I want to do this and I want to do that. No, I want to know him because in knowing him, you will know you. And you'll be able to do everything that he's created you to do. If you don't know him then will you be able to do all that he calls you and tells you to do every day? No, because just like I'm not going to do, like some random stranger calls me. One time there was this scammer that called Pastor Kathy. Like they sent her an email and it was, uh, it looked like Wells Fargo email. So she called the number. Well, the guy was like, your account's being hacked. And so he was telling her, you need to go to the bank. You need to get out this money from this certain account. And then you need to take it to another account. And he said, like, it came from a Wells Fargo email. It looked like professional. Well, so we're like, oh my gosh, this is weird. And so we, we went to the bank and we did that part. But then once we left the bank, it was like, the guy was like, you're gonna go to a gas station and you're going to put it into this account. And she was like, what account? And she was like, well, the number I'm going to give you. And she was like, oh, no. So then I get on the phone, and he's like, ma'am, what are you doing? You know, he's like an Indian. And I was like, bro, you better never call this number again. You're going to regret ever calling it. It was almost like I will hunt you down and find you. I said, I will send people to find you. Do not mess with us again. And he was like, and so then I hung up the phone on him. Well, he called back and I said, I told you never to call this number again. You are going to regret calling it in the first place. Why? I don't know you, bro. I don't know you. And you're not going to have us going all over with the, you know, the, um, the idea that you're Wells Fargo. Like, and it looked perfect. Like everything looked Legit. So then we go to Wells Fargo and the guy was like, yeah, no. Well, uh, clearly, bro, Captain Obvious, thank you. And so we got it all all situated and, and re- reported it to them that like this is what's happening. But it's like if I don't know, then I'm not going to do. Why don't people obey God? Well, they don't know him. They don't know his love. They don't know his faithfulness. Because when you know him, it's so easy to obey. And the thing is, is that when people don't take the time to get to know them personally, remember what it says, Philippians 3.10, put it up. This verse says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, that I may know him. Who can tell me what that word know means? Michael? Like my personal experience. Personal experience, that I'm going to learn of him from personal experience, not someone else's. Y'all, that is awesome that other people walk in abundance. Those things are encouraging. Testimonies can build your faith and, and cause you to see how big God is. But listen, you have to pursue him for you. And remember, we looked at Ezekiel. In Ezekiel, it says, like, the sins of the father aren't going to be put on the son. And the sins of the son aren't going to be put on the father. The righteous will be rewarded for their righteousness, and the wicked For their wickedness. So what does that tell me? God is very like, this is about you. This isn't about your parents' relationship with God. This isn't about your friend's relationship with God. This isn't about the church that you go to. This is about you and your relationship with God. And you have to begin to cultivate or stir up that desire to get to know him personally. God, I want to see you. And I would encourage you every morning, wake up and say, God, I want to see you. But how do we see God? There's a certain way we get to know him. Because a lot of people will spend hours and hours worshiping God. Is that how I get to know God? No. no. Hours and hours praying to God. Is that how I get to know God? No. no. Hours and hours coming to church. Is that how I get to know God? Not, not specific, well, hearing the word, I'm going to know, but how do I get to know God? By Zariah. By reading the word. Me, read. Say me, me. read. Me. That's the recipe. If you've ever bought a, a cake, box cake, have you ever bought a box cake or seen? Or even like Kraft, macaroni and cheese. It's like, you know, Kraft, y'all, macaroni and cheese, it just... It just does something to the soul. It's just like, oh. or, I mean, I think that really my favorite, whenever I would ever eat that stuff, would be the Velveeta shells and cheese. 
Like when extra cheese, yes, got trapped in the shell and then you bit it and it just like, oh my gosh, is that considered a liquid? I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but anyways, so it's like Velveeta shells and cheese. Like there's a certain recipe. Like you don't just open the box of shells and pour it in your bowl and then squeeze the cheese. Right? You don't do that. That's not the recipe on the box. Otherwise, the shells aren't cooked. The shells aren't cooked. You got to cook the shells, right? And then you, do you pour the cheese in with the water and the noodles and everything? No. No. Have y'all ever made macaroni and cheese? Like how old do you have to be to start making food? Because like I started like sixth grade. Oh no. The day I started getting hungry, which was probably in second and mom wasn't around, I started cooking. I remember my, my first grilled cheese. I was little. First grade. Like little stuff. You know what I'm saying? But like I was, I don't know what grade I was in, but I made my first. Wow. Who's talking here? Because I can't hear y'all if y'all are talking to me because I'm talking. You know what I mean? My first grilled cheese I made in a toaster. And I was thinking this is going to be awesome. So I put the bread, the cheese in the toaster. And then it's like, oh, wait, wait. And I'm like, hmm, what's that smell? Like something's burning. Well, guess what it was? The cheese. The cheese melted. Now, you can do that, but guess what you have to do? You just lay it on its side, and then it makes a perfect grilled cheese. If you don't have an oven or you're not allowed to use any other appliance besides the toaster, just don't get your fingers in there. Otherwise, your fingers will be toasted, right? You got toasted fingers, okay? And then we'll have to pray a prayer like the guy with the withered hand and, like, grow back. Your un We're going to have to untoast your toasted fingers, okay? But, like, that was the that's wrong. Well, just like macaroni and cheese, like, I got to boil the noodles, Okay? Put a little bit of salt in there, boil the noodles, and then strain the noodles, and then squeeze that packet of cheese, and then mix it all up. Yummy! Okay, mix it all up. If you have mac and cheese, if you have Kraft, it's the powder. You put the powder in there. But Velveeta, it's the actual squeeze the cheese in there. And then you stir it up, and then you eat it. That's how you make macaroni and cheese. Okay, now people will be like, well, I think that you need to do this, this, and this, and then you need to add this, and this, and this, and that, they, like they add all this extra stuff to it. Like, why are you being extra? Just, they want it to be extra good, or they just want to be like prideful. Like, bro, this is the mac and cheese, just eat the mac. They want to make it their own, oh, well, I'm just making it my own. Okay, well, there's only one way. People that are constantly like making things their own, and like go against just doing like what, what the the thing is supposed to do, I'm like, bro, calm down, performer, you know what I mean? Like, what are you trying to prove? But it's like, just make the macaroni and cheese. But people try to make it all fancy and add all this stuff, which that's fine. Add some bacon to your macaroni and cheese or some sriracha or whatever you want to do. Add whatever you want to. But on the box, what is it going to tell you to do? It's going to give you just make the mac and cheese. It's just going to give you the instructions because they've tried it, right? That macaroni and cheese, that certain package of noodles, and that amount of water, and that sauce in that thing, it has been through trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, right? Like it's been tried and true. And so now they put it in a box and put it on the shelf. And so what are they saying? This is going to taste good. If you like macaroni and cheese, this kind, this is going to taste good to you. This certain ingredient, this certain recipe, this is going to be like what you want. And if I make it according to the box, Ellis makes it, Ryan truly makes it, Titan, we all at our own houses make it exactly according to the box. Then when we come together, will there be a difference in it? No, because no, we followed the instructions. So it will all taste the exact same. There's only one way to get to know God. But this is what people do. Well, I, I just, I know him by going to the mountains and praying to him. Okay, well, that's not what the word says. You're going to know a different version of God and that's not him. You might know something. You might know a God. Well, I just go to this place and stare at the wall and I just know him. No, that's not, that's not what it is, right? Then that's why there's believers that everyone has like this different version of God. God will heal one, but not all. God is good, but then God is in control. God is this. Why is there so many different versions of God? Because people don't get to know him according to the instructions, according to the other word, right? I get to know God 
by the word. Let's go in our Bibles. Let's see where it's written in John 1.14. This is a very clear picture. If I'm going to get to know God, if I'm going to get to know Jesus, then how do I do that? Y'all, there's only one way. I read the word. And then we'll learn on Wednesday night about the spirit. It's word and spirit. But it starts with the word. Like, I can't be like, well, I just didn't feel it today, so God, are you far away? When God feels far away. Do you know why God feels far away? You don't know him. You, have you read the Bible today? Have you meditated on the word today? No, you're doing this. God, I just want to know you in this wall. And I saw the indentions of the wall, and it was made into a heart, and that was God telling me he loves me. What? Do you know when God actually said he loves you? Like John 3, 16. You know what I mean? For God so loved the world. And you would know that because what if you go tomorrow and, you know, your brother or your sister, like, scratched up the wall. So then you go, you try to want to know God, and then it's like, it's like a big skull and crossbones, and you're like, oh, God, uh, I'm going to die, you know, and then you don't even know God. It's all mixed up. The heart's gone. So now what do I know about God? I don't learn from God with outside experience. I don't know about God just from worshiping him. Worshiping him comes from knowing him, right? I know him, that's why I worship him. If I have a hard time worshiping, you know why? Because you don't know him. You don't know him. And how do you know him? You read the word. Me? Read. Me? Read. This is how I know. This is how I know him. And not just like putting, going through like this is an ordinary book, y'all. This isn't an ordinary book. This book is alive. And when you speak the word out of this book, things change like that. Things begin to change supernaturally. So look what it says in John 1.14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory and the glory of those begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the word was made flesh. Well, who is that flesh that the word became? Jesus. Okay, so if Jesus is the flesh, what was he first? Read the scripture. The word. So it's like, Ellis, come here. Okay. So I'm the word because he's always attentive. I'm the word. And then I became. What does it say? Flesh. Flesh. So it was the word. He is the word. Flesh. How do I get to know the flesh? I get to know the word. How do I get to know the flesh? I get to know the word. Now, why was Paul saying, I want to know Jesus? Did Paul walk with Jesus? No. Well, why did he say that he was going to be able to get to know him? Because what did he have? He had the word, right? He had the word. He had what people had written about him. Thank you, Ellis. So Jesus became flesh. If I want to know him, him, Jesus, then I've got to read the word. That's how I know. That's the ingredients. Look at the box of the, the macaroni and cheese. How do I make this? Oh, I'm just going to like worship him and like stare into the sky and the mountains and look for a cloud that looks like God. Is that how I get to know him? No. no. Like I remember one time me and my granny were walking. And it was so weird. Have y'all seen the, um, the new movie, Lyle Lyle Crocodile or something like that? I haven't watched it yet, but I saw the previews for it. But it was literally like... Me and my granny, I could take you back to the place. I was little. We had walked from my house back to her house, and we were walking along, and we looked up, and it was like the sun was going down, and there was a cloud, and it literally looked like an alligator, like a crocodile, like him, but like walking like this, and it was like we started here, and we were literally like looking in the sky, looking at shapes, and so I look up, and it was like he was like following us. And I was like, okay, can this cloud like change already, you know what I mean? Like you start walking faster, but guess what? It's still in the sky. You know what I mean? But it was like a crocodile. I, I'm not going to do that. God, I want to know you. And then I close my eyes and I go outside and I look in the sky and there's a crocodile. Okay, God, I think that you're telling me today that who you are for me is a reptile for the gospel. What, you know what I mean? It's like, what do you do? How do I know God? I get to know God by what? <laughs> by his word. Not by, oh, there was, there was a black cat 
that was about to cross my path, but then it turned around, God, I know that you are going to cause all evil to be avoided. What? I don't get to know God by all these circumstances out here. I get to know God. Remember me? Me read. Me read. Me read. Me read the word. Me read the word. I'm not going to be so focused on knowing all this other stuff. I want to know him. If I know the stats to a football team or certain video games more than I know him, there's a problem. Well, I just don't understand the word. Well, we're going to talk about that on Wednesday night. The Holy Spirit helps you understand it. But, y'all, there's some really easy scriptures. Okay, Philippians 4.19 Philippians 4.19 is you shall supply all my needs. I thought that one was I can do. Philippians 3. 4.13 is I can do all things through Christ. You should, l- let me see if everyone understands from the youngest. Who's the youngest person in here? You're the oldest, bro. The youngest. Evelyn, Merit, how old are you? Okay, come up here, please. I just want to explain to you that knowing God is not difficult. Okay, get him a mic. Merit, are you a believer in the Lord Jesus? Yes. Okay, hold the mic. Now, in the Bible, it says, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. What does that mean? What does that tell me about God? What does he want me to have? Like, Talk in the mic. He wants you to do like, what his word wants you says. Yeah, and so it says... I will give you strength. You can do all things through God, Christ who gives you strength. What does that mean? What does that mean that God has for me? To like read the word. Read the word. But what is he going to give me? What's that word strength mean? Power. Power. Power to do the word. So that scripture, is that like confusing? No. Is it hard? Uh, no. Is it like, oh my gosh, this is so no. hard. Okay. And how old are you? Five. Five. The word is easy, right? Yeah, that's right? Y'all, it's easy to get to know God. Thank you so much, Merritt, for being that amazing example. I mean, you kind of had a little upper hand because of kids say daycare, but it's fine. You are very smart. Um, but guys, the word is simple. And if I know other stuff, like if I know how to get through every level on a Fortnite game and I don't know his voice, there is a problem. Now, is there anything wrong with you being able to know the Fortnite? No, I mean, but if it's distracting you from the word, major problem. Because if I don't know God, then things are going to get cloudy and murky. And the Bible even says that the enemy himself masquerades as an angel of light. So if I don't know God, I can be deceived by the enemy, even if it's something good. If it's not from God, it will get me totally off track. So I have to know God because when I know God, then I can discern. Who can tell me what discern means? Zoe? It's a big word, discern. No, Zoe raised her hand. Discern. Do you know what that means? Close, discern. Liam? Yes, to discern, but it's almost like, like if someone's wearing a mask, I can discern who they really are. So it's almost, I, I, but I can know, I can discern. If I know God, then like I know, I know there's something wrong. Have y'all ever like sat down and you're about to eat something and it's just kind of like you kind of knew like something's not right about this? Maybe the smell or like you just knew something's not. Or if you went into somebody's house, maybe you went to a friend's house and it's like you right away knew like, oh, something's weird. Someone started having a conversation with you and you know it was bad. You're like, oh, that's discerning. Well, I can't discern and know who God is if I don't, hello, know God. How do I know God? Me? Read. Me read the word. That's how I get to know God, because Jesus is the Word. How do I get to know Jesus? By reading the Word. Me? Read. 
me read the word. Well, I can't read yet. Then you have somebody read to you and get like a beginner's Bible that you can actually start reading. You should be able to read by first grade, if not kindergarten. You should be able to read. Caden read when you were how old? What was your first? Like little. How old were you? Four or were you three? He was little. Right, yeah, you were. He was still in pre-K and still in kids. Elliot started reading at a really young age. Elliot, when did you start reading, baby? I started in kinder. No, he started before kinder. He was in the daycare. How old were you, like four? But how old were you when you started reading, baby? Were you three or four? Uh, Just like little words. Uh, Do you remember? Four. You were four. Okay, so if he's four and he's reading, does he have like a special brain? No. No, right, you should be able to learn to read. But until you learn to read, then get you a Bible and start practicing. Play it on, on, the, um, on, on the phone, like on your tablet, whatever. Listen to the word. Have your parents read to you. But that's the only way you're going to know God. And it's not up to somebody else. Do you understand? You have to do this for you. The only way to know God is what? Me? Read. Now, I want to ask you this question, and then we're going to close. What do you prioritize over the word? Over that, God, I want to know you. So I'm going to spend time reading the word. What is one thing that you've been doing instead of that or is more important to you? Should anything be more important than you knowing God? Nothing. It can't. Your life will go to crap. If anything is more important than knowing God, your life does not turn out good, period. Nothing should be more important than knowing God. 